Good morning, everybody. This is Dan uh, from the House of Broken Dobbs Things. I had just a small job this morning I wanted to share with you. It uh, was actually uh, working on a uh, Craftsman 12 inch. This is a 12L version. It's also manufactured by Atlas. Uh, the particular model number on this one is the 101.07403. And we're going to do a minor repair on it, which is very common. I'm just going to share my version of doing it. And uh, what we're actually going to replace today is the cross slide nut. So on mine, it uh, if you take it apart, uh, it feels great. Everything feels good on the shaft, but when you put everything right back together, the cross feed here has a little bit too much backlash for my liking. Um, this is one that I'm just going to... Uh, repair and then uh, basically let somebody else have it. But anyway, I wanted to make an effective repair and not uh, pass the trash on to someone else. So from here, we're going to change this nut and we're going to do it in the shop. It's 24 degrees and snowing in Michigan today. Uh, it's actually been a really good winter so far this year. This is uh, 2020 and the te temperature has been pretty moderate and we are going to affect this little repair and then we are going to uh, move on to something else. So, uh, stay tuned and we'll be right back. Okay, before we get out in the shop, um, since I were working on the wife's uh, uh, kitchen counter island top, <laughs> I just wanted to show you this before we get out there and it starts getting dirty and maybe a little darker, but uh, this is one I uh, acquired from an eBay seller. Uh, he's located here in Michigan. Uh, it was uh, $37 and that's actually a pretty fair price for what this is and it appears to be in really good condition we'll know better once we get it out there in the lathe itself uh, of course i'm going to have a little bit of uh, wear on the cross feed screw but i think this will help because this is really the sacrificial part uh, the steel versus the brass and the brass or bronze loses anyway uh, i just want to share that with you it looks to be very well done um, I was going to make one, but it's like, uh, really, I, I can't justify spending all that much time. And again, as some of you know, these are Acme threads inside, and I believe these are left hand. I'll have to double check, but uh, it would be fun to make, but I just need to get this moved out of the way because I have uh, too much stuff. So, all right, so we'll uh, bring you back when we're out in the shop. Okay, just changed my mind just a little bit. Um, Seems that we've got the nice diagram here. I'm going to give you a kind of a quick snapshot of what's going to happen. Um, the lead screw is not very well shown, but it actually goes, excuse me, the cross feed screw goes right through the center here and it threads into this, which is a cross feed nut. The cross feed nut is actually secured to the uh, cross slide <clears throat> at this point by one screw. All right, so this screw goes through here and it connects this to this nut and then that connects it to the shaft. That shaft is driven out by this crank handle here. And from there, you can see that there's an outside nut, an inside nut, which is really for setting the end play. There is a <clears throat> uh, Woodruff key here, which actually drives the handle to the crossfeed shaft. And there's a couple of bushings that are actually pressed into this main housing. For those of you that uh, are gonna be reaching for the wrench to go at that one, mine happens to be an inch and 5 16ths. Uh, I happen to have that wrench, so it actually makes it kind of nice, but just so you know, that's what we're going to do. This gear here is actually held on by a Woodruff key, and it is a bit of a press fit. It goes in here, but we're actually going to get this thing unthreaded, and we're going to bring it out this direction, and then that's going to allow us to come back in the backside. One thing that's really nice, <clears throat> excuse me, that's nice is this little cover here comes off with one screw, and then you have some exposed surface here for the crossfeed screw. Uh, that you can actually get in there and actually help the nut go inside. Uh, if you take this the opposite direction, uh, going this way, that gear will fall off. It will drop immediately down into the area here, and you're going to have to go either fish for it or you're going to have to pull off the, uh, um, uh, the feed screw and take off the carriage, and it's just going to be a hot mess. So I believe we can make it work the way I'm suggesting, and we'll go from there. But just want to give you a couple of tips of what's going to happen. And when you see it, it'll be maybe a little bit more clear to you. All right, we'll bring you back. Well, here we are in the garage. Uh, this is the 12-inch uh, Craftsman slash Atlas, the uh, 12L, as we talked about before. 
There's the Craftsman badging. Uh, these uh, are actually pretty sturdy. This is the uh, heavier duty version than the uh, typical six inch Craftsman you might have ran across. Um, this one does not have a quick change box, but it certainly is uh, not super lightweight either. Uh, it does a really nice job. It is a flatbed lathe. Uh, there it has a little bit of wear in the bed, but it's nothing dramatic. And basically you can see all the rest of my, uh, it's uh, Saturday morning, I need some coffee. And uh, this happens to be the table nearest to the garage door, so it acquires some of the additional stuff. But I just wanted to show this one to you. Uh, before we get too far, to see if you can see this well. Down. All right. Uh, what I'm setting up right now is checking the in play specifically. Uh, everything is tight along the shaft as far as everything else. This should be predominantly just what is going on between the uh, crossfeed screw and the crossfeed nut. All right, <clears throat> don't try this at home. So if we take this at about 17, yeah. All right, now. I'm going to push this away just temporarily. Now listen. Hopefully you can pick that up. There's a little bit of heater background drop. So yeah, uh, I think it has a significant amount of wear. Uh, that's going to be fine if you're uh, going in, but uh, that's really way too much to be dealing with. So uh, that's why I'm here. That's why we're going to take a look at this. I'm not sure we're going to get all of it out. I'm not even sure we're going to get most of it out. But we're certainly going to give it a try before we start thinking about making a new screw to go with a new nut. But anyway, uh, that's just a quick test. I'm going to set the camera up just a little differently here to give you a better angle of view. And we will bring you right back. Okay, just a quick check before I get into too much here. But uh, I left the diagram here just for some of you that may be brand new. I know a lot of you are like, oh boy, you know the video on an Atlas lathe as if there aren't a bunch. Well, you know, here we go. There's always a beginner. I was one. Maybe some of you were too. Uh, right here, this is on the carriage. Right here, uh, there's the screw, which actually fastens the uh, crossfeed nut onto the crossfeed shaft. Basically, holds the nut to the carriage, in other words, all right? So just one simple screw. Take that out before we get too far down the line. I just put a washer in there just as a cheat to see if that would help anything. So. Nothing really special about that one. I do like to keep the old fasteners because, uh, you know what, this thing has survived for, I haven't dated this one, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be, I don't know, 70, 50 to 70 years old. So, there you go. Okay, so there's that. And within there, that is actually, hopefully you can see that, that is what fastens that to the crossfeed nut. So for you, Home gamers, this is what it really looks like when it's in position. Okay, so nothing really all that exciting about it, but exception to uh, just showing you kind of what it looks like because uh, <clears throat> there's a lot really not a lot to the repair, but there's a, kind of a lot to understand what's going on if you've never ever ever touched one. You found one at a garage sale, and this is your trophy. Okay. All right, I'll bring you right back and adjust the camera a little bit more. Okay, um, take it back just a little bit more. Okay, so on the top, you basically have your compound. On the bottom is your cross feed right here. When I got this one, this uh, handle was broken off, as does happen most of the time when someone moves it and doesn't have it. Somebody to help them, it tips, because this is very, very top heavy. Uh, in its design, the motor hangs way off the back and it stands pretty tall because it's a 12 inch and it can get uh, off center real quick. So the handles are usually the first things that go. Uh, this is an authentic handle, so I didn't have anything cheap. So from here, this is a 9 16th nut and I'm working on the cross slide now. Okay. Just a simple, uh, looks like the original. Somebody will correct me, that's fine. And I have one of my little magnetic trays holding everything. So the handle slides right off. 
and right behind that is the Woodruff key. Some vernaculars might call that uh, some might call that a, uh, a half moon key. It, it's wherever you grew up, folks. And then there is a nut right here. Back that off. And I want to play some experimentation right here because this is your indicator as far as where you are. I'm going to make a thumb screw for that one, I think, because it's just really unwielding, that crazy thing. Um, the dials are really, really small. This is very, very common for someone to make their own uh, updated hand, hand wheels. Uh, but again, this one is uh, going to get turned loose to somebody else. There's your hand wheel. Can you see it up close? Focus, focus. It is very hard to read. And I can take an ink pen, or excuse me, a, a Sharpie, and go over it, then wipe it down with acetone. That'll bring those numbers out a little bit. That's a uh, Keith Rucker trick. But uh, right now, we're just going to go from there. Okay. Um, I'm just going to crank this over. <laughs> yeah, I'm cranking the compound away. Get it out of our way. All right. Uh, this right here is pretty much the main assembly. If you go back to the uh, diagram, that's this guy right here, and I called that out before as an inch and five sixteenths. So if you don't have any, uh, I would recommend you go ahead and just find one. Look at that. You're going to go and you're going to say, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put the uh, box end on. Uh, no. The little knob underneath here is not going to give you enough clearance. So you have to use the open end. Very gently. Try not to say I pulled the knob out. Give myself just a little bit of room. Okay. There. Okay, just kind of give you an idea of what was going on. I've got this loose right now, but what was happening for me was this uh, little bitty oil plug here was actually in just a smidge too tight and it was grabbing onto the thread. So, I'll just give you an idea. little bitty thing but just go ahead and back that out you shouldn't give you any trouble and then this the housing assembly comes off uh, going back to the diagram kind of see that uh, it has a bushing pushed inside and there's another bushing on the opposite end and then this is a pretty custom assembly so you can have fun making one of these if you don't have one all right so we've got that dealt with Okay, and from there, I'm going to do just one other small thing that I didn't do earlier. I mentioned this earlier, but right back here, this little carriage cover. Actually, opens up and lets you get to the screw. Okay. That screw is countersunk, so don't lose it. Not that it's that super special, but it has its place. And then uh, if you've got stuff that's moving over the top of the other stuff, it's probably best that you uh, keep everything as much as you can. Okay. Now internally, we have disconnected everything. And I think you can see, see how we're moving that around. All right. All right, slight change of plan. I'm going to have not as much room as I thought I was. So I'm going to go ahead and back off the Gibbs set screws. These are uh, 3 8 hex and then just a little screwdriver in between. And inside here is the little... Uh, right there's the insert that actually pushes to give it a little bit of drag that it needs to take up clearance. Okay. And we're going to pull it this way. And there's the, the gear itself, which is a little bit of a press fit. You can see nothing, nothing exotic there. Back this out. 
And I'm, this is left hand thread, as I said, I was going to confirm that for you. All right, there's a the screw. And now, Crossfeed nut. All right. So there's the old one, and here's the new one. Seems to be pretty spot on. Just curious if they're uh, went ahead and drew that up and they're like CNC in it or something. It's kind of intricate for just a little set screw. Now, before I go too far. Here's a nut. This is kind of what was kind of weird to me. Now normally, you may have a spot on the screw itself, which is worn because you kept using it over and over and over in the same spot. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. That little bit. I've seen a lot worse. Randy <laughs> Richard had one on his with his... Uh, surface grinder that was really just beat up. Just to give you something to reference on. There you go. Alright, so that is the old one. If you've never adjusted your Gibbs before, you might as well learn how. <laughs> And it's a personal thing. Some folks like them really, really snug. Some folks, not quite so much. All right, so I'm going to thread this one on. Ooh, very nice. Just thread it on like butter. So far, I've got no tight spots, which I would expect. Okay, let's see if we can get up in the same general area. Oh, yeah. There's a little... Not much, just take it on up. Because that is a bit of an extreme at the far end. That wouldn't have been there much. Not much, if any at all. What I'm kind of double checking here is if there's any really significant wear on the screw at a certain location. Had a, eh, there's a little bit right there. We'll see what that manifests to be into becoming. It's very smooth all the way through, though. So well done on that Acme thread. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I was being a bit rude. I was working off camera there. Um, so here's the new nut itself. Um, it does appear to be a little bit of taper right in the center where you can actually set this. And it will slide right over. Just went right over it right there. Okay, so that's so far this has been really very painless. Okay, before I do anything crazy, I'm going to try to come through here and pick up the thread. in try to not knock my gear off there we go 
Now, the nut is in position. So I'm going to go ahead and these can take a little bit of finesse sometimes, but I don't know that this is going to be the case here. So that has aligned the gear inside and it's slid into position. Okay, proof's in the pudding. Um, I think I remember we were about 17 when we got started down this road. Uh, slightly disappointing. We got out some of it, but not all of it, which is fine. I understood there'd be some wear, but uh, we got about 10 thousandths, I'm going to call it. Maybe 11. Okay, that's at that point in space. And that is all the way out, which is a very heavily worked area for this one. Okay, let's set up the figure again, just for giggles. Okay, welcome back. Uh, after some growling at myself, uh, I think I've got something interesting. So, um, I've kind of got a Rube Goldberg thing set up here, but what I was showing you is I'm setting up a washer which is pulling against this, and I've given it a, uh, a point here to actually be outside the perimeter of the section of the feed nut that comes through. The reason I say that, because I was showing you earlier, I kind of noticed a little bit of wiggling going on in that bore. So, if you'll watch now, uh, let's see. Maybe you can see better. All right. And I'm reefing down on it with my chunky self. Okay, so. Go back to here. All right, now watch. I'm gonna do nothing more than take out this, and I'm gonna snug this up again. Hey, look at that! Let's have a closer look. Do nothing more. Add this underneath on the periphery and that's got a bore it's not cocking this thing much to any extent all right let's see what happens oh look at that uh oh did I 
go through all this for nothing? Well, maybe. Let's just change this up just a little bit. Now, I didn't do anything other than loosen that nut. All right? Now, I'm going to come in with this and I'm going to try to catch the edge of that washer just to allow it to basically come over over plumb with the face of this all right to give it some place to go all right Let's see if we can play games with this thing okay nope not enough but you can see the movement of that washer vantage point okay now you can see it from my angle that's that screw moving in that bore now you can see it manifest itself out there so if I add back in my little washer And there's plenty of threads to go down further. Um, I don't have to use this one, but it's just the one that was in there, and hopefully it looks somewhat authentic. So, and I get it out here on the edge, so I'm not stepping on the, the part of it coming through the center. Okay, to me, and again, I'm by no means a stretch of anybody's imagination, an expert in this field, but it appears to me that the bore on the carriage has a little side play that manifests itself into carriage travel as it moves around in that bore. I am leaning in this thing. Is that seven or eight? That gauge is not the greatest, trust me. Um, okay. So, what we did, we went in. And took the new one, shoo, excuse me, took the new one and I shaved off 35 thousandths in the mill and then I just reset it in there. So you'll notice uh, no washers, no nothing. So basically 35 was just barely enough to uh, set it below the surface so the actual when the screw goes on is actually going to actually put pressure to actually pull that into position and hold it tight. So, the feel, and I haven't adjusted the gibbs or anything yet. Let me adjust some of this. And that's my well north of 200 pounds leaning in it pretty hard. Oh yeah, you'll notice the back of this, the, uh, the magnetic thing, it has nothing to do with the gauge itself. It's just uh, the magnet back on it. It got dropped. <laughs> okay. Now, what did we learn? Well, maybe I bought a nut that I didn't need. No, I don't think so. I think it needed it. But it also had a lurking issue in here, which uh, the nut itself did not clean up. Now, let's just do the simple test. You remember the audible version that we did earlier? Uh, no. This thing is snug as a bug now. 
very happy with that the way it is. Yeah. So I think we learned something. May be absolutely totally unique among anybody out there, or it might be a lurking thing that some people don't even know. So before you go buy a screw, check that bore real close to make sure that isn't moving. Just take the uh, take the uh, screw out of there and then give it a little push. And if it's wobbling around, that's probably contributing to it. It's not the root cause, probably, but it's probably contributing. Okay. So with that. You're doing pretty good. I'm much happier. No more money was spent. Things are looking good. I think this will make someone a very, very, very nice garage lathe. Um, I think we snatched victory from the jaws of defeat today. Whereas before, we were pretty much heading the opposite direction. Oh, baby. That is lots better. I can show this to a prospective buyer with great confidence now. So, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I know some of this is very mundane for a lot of you who have done this a dozen times. Technique-wise, yeah, I learned something doing it, but hopefully you saw something in there that you can use. Um, again, I'm not giving a uh, tutorial on exactly how to do it. I'm just showing you what I did. So, there you go. Your mileage may vary. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Dan, and uh, we'll see you next time.